mind how I play. Yeah. Right. They don't they no know idea. your game. They training you like everybody else. That's the only thing I have training. So uh, I watch them like, I don't even know what you can do good. Like, it's customized. And I got to break down your game and be like, nah, we're not working on none of that. We'll break into some weaknesses. <laughs> I do be looking, yeah. I'm, I'm, so, cause I'm, hey, used, I'm so used mic. to my page. I'll be, uh, hold on a second, hold on a second. Got you. The okay. ultimate rage. Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, can yeah. you? Okay. That's, that's check, yeah, check. Hey, somebody got your daddy name in here, Marcus Johnson. With a Q U E S? No. Hey, is that what people are doing now? They're bringing in the, the fake national generic dance? Test, test, test. <laughs> you, can't stand, you can't stand next to me anyway. So you, you can't stand the most hated. You can't stand Why? next to me. Why? Uh, you, you'll find out. Uh, <laughs> you wear, because you wear a crown. When I put this motherfucker on. You'll find out. Yeah. It'd take about and I don't agree with minutes. nothing nobody It'd take say. about 20, t 20 seconds into the show. You'd be like, all right. I can't uh, okay. They can't stand Got this it. motherfucker <laughs> on stage. <laughs> New Mike Premier Hook. Hey, y'all. We got a we got a special we doing a special FaceTime today. Make sure y'all stick around for that. Y'all gonna be thoroughly surprised. I don't. I think it says it. I think it's on the. Um, it's on there already. Yeah. It's, they it's tipped it. Uh, well. No, it's literally on there. It's on the shit. Oh wow. Well, shit. Y'all already know. Mm. He said, I got pants that, that all unzip and turn into shorts. It's <laughs> 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 the breakaway. <laughs>
not picking up, go call your friends, cousins, uncles, aunties, everybody just got used to this kind of up. They said if we hit 10K, we gotta, we gotta bump them in the middle and still try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa! whoa, whoa. <laughs> Sorry for the technical delay. We was getting everything ready. We got a very, very special show for y'all today. But Gil, first I got to know, do you ever get tired of watching your own highlights? Nope. Never. never? <laughs> no, never. Run it back! No, <laughs> Run it back. never, ever. Never, ever. Never. Well, this is Gills Arena. We got the legend Gilbert Arenas here. We got Rashad McCanson. We got a very special guest making her debut in Yay. the arena. Let's go. Currently balling with the Sparks, WNBA champion, Lexi Brown. We appreciate you pulling up. Oh, thanks for having me. So we follow I've been other. looking forward to this. Yeah. I've been <laughs> so excited to finally make it's it. It's nice to finally have you here, meet you in the flesh. You know, you never know what people are like on Twitter, but yeah, that's true. you're as advertised. <laughs> we, you know, we're excited to have you here on Gills Arena. You know, but sometimes on Twitter, people pull up and they be like, uh, oh, creepy or whatever. <laughs> Very yeah, normal. So, so yeah. excited to have you. The show is presented by Underdog Fantasy, so remember, Keep us on the air. Go ahead and download that Underdog Fantasy app. Use promo code Gills Arena. They will match your first deposit up to $100. Put $100 in, you got $200. And hopefully you don't get cooked like all of us. Before. It ain't easy. Don't <laughs> do the five days. <laughs> Start with two. Start with two. They will not betray you. I want $62 this week. Here I'm we good. go. Here you go. <laughs> 62 <laughs> whole dollars. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna brag? You gonna throw me under the bus? I'm just saying, your logic is, his logic is horrible. I'm right there. Every time I'm one down. Four for five. I'm four one for five. down. Four four four. But you gotta take the five and then look at it's the one that you don't fault. really believe in. Just take your fault. Just take what insurance. insurance. What'd you do? What'd I'm, you tell me? Don't take What'd insurance. you tell me? Don't. Did, did, he told me that. Don't take insurance. That's for punks, man. You don't do it. And I keep losing my one. Go, why you gonna go into the pick 'em with doubt? You go insure safety. safety. See, it's like a condom. See? You see, I need to be paying attention. You got I'm raw dog and Gil's logic, and <laughs> I, raw dog and his I need to be listening to Gil. Raw dog and him. He's messing me up, man. That's a crazy raw dog to pick him, no insurance. Raw dog to pick him. When you hit, you really going to hit. You really gonna and we, we see the chat is filling up. <laughs> Damn, I didn't even mean it. You didn't even mean to do that. Hey, man, when you hit, you really hit. Yeah, yeah. hit. But we see the chat's filling up. So remember, we do mostly fans at the end of the show. Go ahead and drop in your best questions. They got to be good questions, remember. Can't be waxy. You can't ask why I don't wear pants. That's a personal life choice that I have. <laughs> hey, you like these kneecaps. There might be a little ashy today, I'm going to be honest. Then cocoa butter. But ask those questions. They'll be featured in Mostly Fans. So we got a lot of basketball to get into, and we got a special guest, which they already put on the, the YouTube title. It's going to surprise everybody. Yeah. But they coming. So Javaris Crandon will be on this show. I think making his first interview appearance. Interview in a, a minute. Yep. In a, in a, in a long Take while. Mm-hmm. But before we talk about basketball, let's hit a little bit about football in, in the college football landscape. Uh, so Deion Sanders came to Colorado. They were 1-11 last year. Nasty. But uh, they had their spring game on ESPN. I think it was the only college football team to have a spring game on ESPN. Others had it on ESPN, too. I think Georgia, Alabama. But primetime was on primetime ESPN. But after the game, he reportedly lost 18 players to the transfer portal. Mm. They just dipped out. 
So like I said, they're coming off a 111 year. And you might remember when Dion first got the job, I think his first official meeting with the team, uh, he told them the following. We got a few positions already taken care of because I'm bringing my luggage with me. And it's Louie. <laughs> it's Louie. It's Louie. It ain't going to be no more of the mess that these wonderful fans, the student body, and some of your parents have put up with for probably two decades now. I'm coming. And when I get him, it's going to be changed. Now, you look at some of them dudes' faces, they was already shook. They knew it was coming. But the thing is, what Deion doing is nothing new for college coaches. I mean, we hear stories all the time about coaches coming into programs and cleaning house. You know, it's no different than Lincoln Riley, Nick Saban, Urban Meyer, in this sense with Florida and Ohio State. You know, major college coaches do this, but Deion is just louder about it. So the question for you, Gail, start. I mean, okay. Do people treat Deion Sanders differently because he's more upfront and vocal about the dark side of college football? I think because he's a celebrity, he is who he is, if, you know, um, beyond prime time. So when he speaks, because we know what he used to talk like, him <laughs> being a coach doing the same thing kind of yeah. shakes it up a little bit. But it's, it's important. It's needed. What's yeah. what you think? Uh, yeah, like he said, man, it's him being a polarizing figure, one, and then him being flamboyant and out there with his words and being a superstar. Like, he... He can back it up. So for him to tell them all the stuff that he's doing, the slack he's going to get should be expected. He should expect everything that they saying, they throwing at him because he's been doing that for years. He's been catching that shit for years. So ain't no different now. You know, he should expect any kind of blowback from any decision he make, but he just got to show the results. He go out there, he win, turn the program around. Shit, I didn't really ever say nothing to him. Yeah, I mean, I can respect that he's upfront about it because, you know, I know we've all dealt with coaches that, do their dirt in the, in the dark, and they, you come out looking crazy because you're the, you're the player, they're the coach. So him just putting it all in the open like that, like he said, like if he starts winning, then it's gonna be, wait, he's going to get the same type of flag if he, start, if he loses games. Like, yeah. It's going to be all on him because he's like, I'm changing this program around. So he has to do it. He's got he to gotta, he gotta work. But I'm glad that he's like putting himself out there. Like He's being honest, and I think that we need to see more honesty in coaches. For sure. I feel like we all have personal experiences we could probably draw from. You know, nope. most coaches are haters, as we already know. <laughs> nah. Mm -mm. Never? No. No coach ever hated on you, Gil? No Don Nelson. No, I don't give a fuck what they were talking about. The, no coach ever hated Don you. Nelson. I never had no You Don didn't have Don Nelson? No. He came after you? Yeah. Oh, shit. So I no, didn't care what they would. But I'm saying no coach has ever hated First of all, no coach nobody want until you give it to him. All right? They can say he can, if I was there, he can, he can have Louis Vuitton all he want. <laughs> yeah. I'm some new bitch. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's new. What are you talking about? Real I'm the only one that motherfucker like, before. yeah, I'm be the only one that motherfucker like, yeah, I don't know who he talking <laughs> to, not, talking not to me. me. God damn it. I'm going to just say that. Was I mean, it's a mind a game. He's still mind, he's still messing with their minds. Because yeah, he mm -hmm. you have players who are going to crumble, and then you're going to have players going to be like, all right, bet. Like, you want to see some, I'm going to do it. But then you got players who are like, Oh no! But that's the one he don't want. The ones that come. Exactly. Yes. And he's looking at. That's what I'm he's looking at. He's looking at body language. He wants to see who like, like start doing shit like this. <laughs> start looking around. Looking nah. Right. You the you the weak ones. All right. Y'all out. But you never had a coach play with your emotions. What do you mean play with my emotions? <laughs> I'm just saying. Listen. No, they tried. Yes, every coach tried. Coach, but Coach K, did he play with your emotions? Yeah, that bitch did. See? <laughs> I'm not trying to say you. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Yeah. He Ooh, we got you to admit uh, that. You were Louie, right? He, he, he didn't want more Louie. Damn. Damn. I'm just saying. But he we didn't break you, he, 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 break you. he didn't break you. Nah, he... he uh, <laughs> kind of cracked you a little bit. Kind of cracked me a little bit. <laughs> you know, had me, had me second-guessing my skills because I was playing behind some weak-ass some weak ass dudes. Real shit. Yeah. Real shit. Had me second-guessing. I had to come back to the States and realize, oh, I'm him. <laughs> <Oopsie. laughs> <laughs> That's most important. And like you said, if they if, if you're really about that, you know, if coach come in and say that, like, nah, I know you ain't talking to me, you're talking to some of y'all. I'm Louis here. We are Louis here, it's it's a, Everything a, is a test, man. It's how a you test. respond, right? Yep. If a coach come in and challenge everybody, he's looking at who gonna be my leader, who gonna be the one step up and say, All right, let's go, Will. Let's go. Oh, he just said we gotta run what, 30 sprints in, in a certain time. He only said that to see who really gonna be like, yeah, let's go. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, ain't nobody gonna move? Oh, y'all all out of here. So back to Dion. So after they had that spring game, uh, and the 18 players hit the transfer portal, there are reports now that, that Dion's not giving players access to their practice footage. Now, this is 
not a big deal. College coaches do it all the time. They don't want to give, you know, I'm not trying to give you inside access, but obviously we're all hoopers, so should college coaches help transferring players? Do they have any obligation to do that? Mm, no. I don't think so. The fuck I'm giving you my place for? <laughs> Just don't talk down on me if I leave. That's all I ask As a coach? to do. Yeah. yeah. Just let me go. For sure. Isn't that, isn't that what they've been doing the whole time? No, that's what they do. They talk shit about no, you. They yeah, they talk, so why wouldn't they help you? Why would they? In this situation. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't they help you? He's if coming they, into a new program. He's already told these guys, a lot of you guys aren't my guys. Mm -hmm. Does he have any obligation to at least no. help them? All right, no. see y'all later. So why, is the obliga why would it be the obligation to trash them if, you know, you could talk bad about a player, you should be able to talk good about a player, right? Yeah. So if you're going to help him and he ain't never played for you, there's no reason to talk bad about him or not give him what he needs to get to the next level, right? But if you don't like the player, you go bash him to the next team that he's trying to go to and in that, you know, that good morale that he's trying to move on with, that's the dynamic I see this happening. It's like we're giving the coaches the leniency to talk trash about a player that lead a program because they feel some type of way. But then if he don't leave because he feels some type of way, you're not going to talk bad about him and put him in a good position. That's all that really the players need because they can't, yeah, they're, not, they're not their I, own uh, agents. If they ask about the player, I think you should speak positive. You don't have anything positive to say. Just be like, he does this. Like, just keep it very generic and let them find out for themselves. But, like, to give practice film, like, I don't think, like... Yeah, that's too far. I I, that's I, yeah, too I treat everybody like my ex. Great. Amazing. Great personality. <laughs> you're going to mess I'm big well. on. I'm big on see for yourself. <laughs> yeah, see for, see for yourself. I'm big on you see, just... But I'm not giving you my film. Yeah. That's plays that, you know, that get into the wrong coach's hands. You have everything that you need to, you know, to have to stop me. So, no, nah, you... Here, this is what we're going to do. All right, here. <laughs> Run the route, I'm going to pass it. There you go. Send it. But girl, but <laughs> Send look, it. But Send girl. your own fucking well, do they not have other But you like, are, they you are yourself a human highlight. You know things without even having to have the footage. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to go to a team, you already know the playbook. I don't need footage. I know the whole playbook. I know, but this is practice, though. You know, the, you know you're talking about practice plays. We're talking about practice. Whatever about practice, practice. So, so you got your rivals. They'll bring that kid in just for that, that, that tape. But think I don't about want you. I want the information. What you know at practice that ain't on film, you can still say. Like, you know, oh, yeah, we got this play that we run. We don't never really run in the game. But this is how the play go. Like, it's the same as footage. The only difference is you're not going to give – the team not going to give footage to another team. But give the footage to the player. And who he going to give it to? We don't know. To the other team. To a lot of teams. What, yeah. what is he going to do with the information he already know without the footage? Him. He ain't nobody. That's why he transferred. Coaches are haters. <laughs> Shit. Coaches are haters, but players can be haters too. I was going to say, players can be haters too. So <laughs> with or without the footage, you can still snitch uh, on the whole situation. I'm, listen, I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all, man. The portal, there's no pros in the portal. Okay? Facts. I'm sorry. There's no, if you in the portal, you're not a fucking pro. Sorry. Like there be they, one. And they become a pro. No. Pros in the portal? The motherfucker averaged 16 points at some small school jumping to the portal going where? Trying to get more visibility. No. no. More brand awareness. No. Well, he's talking about pros, though. Pros. Like pros you are not being a pro in the portal. Okay, but I, was in the, I went to the portal. And you was a pro. When the fuck? Well, there was no portal back then. There was a portal back then. But you got to sit out a year. Oh, that's not the portal. Yeah, that's not the portal. Is that's this, not the... Okay, so I, I, well, I know this is kind of off base, but like the not sitting out. Do you think they should bring that back or just leave it? I think they need to bring it, bring it, yeah, bring, which, bring what it back. Yeah, what you went to, that, that's what I said, that's not called the portal, what you did, where you transfer, sit out. Sit. I mean, shirt. but that's, that's what transferring was yeah, yeah, until, yeah. what, two years ago? Yeah, no. Like, now it's like, I mean, I called it free agency it's, for the girls right we now. We do, too. <laughs> we call Especially it free with but, the money. But that's, a, but that's what I'm it's saying. It's no longer a portal, it's a free agency. Like, here, I'm going to give you all some game. Listen, 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 listen. No matter if you're superstars, second, second option, Treat it like free agency NBA players. The only way you get paid is to jump in the portal because you can go back to school. Yep. So, like, if you commit back, they, they're not, I don't need to negotiate with you, right? If I say, yo, I'm at Duke and I average 25 points and I'm out, I'm about to hit the portal, right? This school offered me 400000 What you going to do? Right? You said that you can do it's that. So, it's so different now because I, I genuinely left. I was at Maryland first. I genuinely left because I did not like playing in the Big Ten and I missed being closer to my family. Like, mm -hmm. 
But if Marilyn is like, Lexi, we'll, we'll make sure you get X amount of money. And I was like, okay, Duke. And they're like, no. And of course, I'm going to stay <laughs> yeah, in Maryland. Yeah. But it's like, we didn't have that. We'll bring your family and we'll bring home yeah. to you. But that's what I said. You get the leverage like as a superstar. Um, but you know, like NILs is not, it's not what people think it is. Like, right, right. you're not going to get the money. Like, these kids are being promised money that, who the fuck are you? No, serious. Who are you? Your your platform is not big enough for like AT and T to give you fifty grand. Like, They're not gonna get their money back. Like, who the fuck are you? You like I don't give a f- unless you're unless you're Zion at the top. But of at this that game. point, you yeah. you going pro? Yeah, like so, yes, yeah, so it's like it's it was it's so fucking. Hey, kids fantasy. are getting those bags though, especially on the no. women's side where it's different, yeah, right? You can't just absolutely. jump straight. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what does right. it remind you of? OnlyFans. <laughs> hey. <laughs> If you can't just you I just can't set up no OnlyFans oh. and get get start getting popping and getting paid, yeah. you got to be somebody. No, you're have right. a following. I saw boom, a girl boom, boom. on TikTok said that she used to make like regular TikToks, like she was already like millions of followers on TikTok. She came up on my scroll page once, and she was like, "Get ready with me to do a scene," and I go to the comments, and it's like none of her followers on TikTok had any idea she was an OnlyFans. <laughs> No idea. And she already had like two, three million people. So she like, that was like months ago. She like came up on my page again because people were like, why did you do that? And she said that she has doubled her income on OnlyFans ever since she Boom. brought, she merged the, the two accounts. And I'm like, that's- Leverage your brand to get the bag <laughs> you deserve. Facts. I was like, that's crazy. Well, that's you know, we talked football, but we are a basketball show. So let's keep this thing shaking and moving, because like I said, we got Javar coming through in a little bit. Yeah. First, yeah, we got to talk about the other team in Los Angeles, uh, these Clippers. Woo, woo. So let's go back in the hot tub time machine to the summer of 2019. Lakers. Clippers made some moves that were supposed to forever alter their franchise. Yeah, you heard, did you hear the, the name wrong? He said Clippers. The other team. I didn't say, he said, I didn't say the he said brother the team. Other. I said the other team. Oh, the you're a real Clippers fan. But 2019, underneath. Clippers grabbed Kawhi Leonard fresh off a championship with the Raptors and traded for Paul George. Now, Kawhi PG was supposed to make the Clippers the championship contender, but the past four seasons have been disappointing, to say the least, right? And to have us all wondering, what if? Oh, Kawhi played 24 games with the Raptors during their 2019 chip run. He's played 24 total playoff games with the Clippers in four seasons. Damn. 2020, blew the 3-1 lead in the bubble to the Nuggets. 2021, they made the Western Conference Finals without Kawhi. PG was averaging 29-11, and 11, but Clippers ultimately lost to the Suns. 2022, they got smacked in the play-in. And now 2023, Kawhi played those first two games he was killing. I think averaging like 35 and 7 and 6 assists. Then he had the uh, knee issue, missed the rest of the series. Paul George didn't play a game. He was supposed to be available for this, the next round, but we knew they had to get there first. So mm-hmm. Cancun on three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but after the Clippers game five loss to the Suns on Tuesday night, Tyloo had this to say. What else could be? I mean, yeah, our two best players got hurt. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you to take Steph and Clay off of Golden State. Take Booker and KD off this team. Oh, shit. That's oh. what we're doing. Greek Freak was out two games. They could, he's the best. You know, so just, you know, take your two best players off of any team in the league and see if they can win in the playoffs. I guess a team that's picked to win it. Dang. Mm. Prayers up for the Clippers. I mean, he was better off just saying, it's the Clippers. Yeah. <laughs> he was better off saying that. It's the Clippers. For real. It's for the Clippers. Real. Think what you expect. What you expect. <laughs> but so question for you. Start with you, Gil. Was this the last dance for the Kawhi and PG Clippers? Man, I'm, I'm not a Clipper fan. I don't care. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just saying. It's like, it, it is the Clippers. No one ever, I mean, no smart individual had them doing anything um, positive because you got the Clippers came, then LeBron and AD came also in that same summer. So, yeah. Yeah. So AD came, yeah. AD came first. Lakers fans were feeling themselves. They didn't make the playoffs that year. And then a couple of days later, the Kawhi and PG news dropped. Everybody was at Summer League flexing. Jerry yep. West was mm-hmm. stunning on LeBron. Like, yeah, you know, we got you. But it, it just didn't happen. So, Rashad, what, what do you think about this, this Kawhi and PG Clippers? And is this the last dance we're going to see with this Clippers team? I mean, the stats that you pulled out for the, the four years for Kawhi with the, the Clippers only playing 24 total what, playoff games, yeah. that's tough. That's tough, man. And then looking at how PG is never really fully healthy for the playoffs. The last playoffs he averaged 20. Was like 29 and 11. 29 and 11. That's oh, what wait, we that get, was in 2021, excuse me. We got to see playoff P. They didn't you know, have PG last playoffs. 
So, so when we see playoff P playing and engaging without Kawhi, and then we see Kawhi out there engaging without PG, and it's like, y'all ain't never together, then you bring in Russell Westbrook to be the one we blame. And I think that that's going to forever be his mantra now, to pull him in, let him play, and then blame him at the end. Like, oh, y'all brought Russ in, and that's why y'all lost. When Russ is really the battery pack for them, it's just that the other two pieces ain't never really there. You know what I'm saying? So then you look at Russ's performance last night, like I said, when he don't have those other two guys, it's Russ being Russ. It's Russ all over again. And he don't have no Steven Adams type that can get him the triple-double that he need. It's tough on them. It's tough on them. And I, I just think the Clippers, like you said, Clippers are being Clippers, and Ty Lue need to take more accountability. I think that saying that about your t- two best players not playing, that's taking the slack off you. Because you got other players on the team. No, you don't. Basically, he said, my team sucks. Like, <laughs> that, that, what do you want me to do with this? You got 11 other players. You got to figure it out. You want to be a good coach? Be a good coach. Coach them boys up. Coach them boys up. Situation. Hey, man, you lost your two best players. So what? Nah. <laughs> they got one win. That's, hey, that's good. Niggas, that's good get, niggas get shot every day, B. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man up. Pull your skirt down, B. You know what I'm saying? You tough, right? I guess. Yeah. You get rid of both of them, or you keep one? I mean, if you keep one, who do you keep? It seems like Kawhi, that trajectory, he might be, you know. Yeah, I'm keeping Paul. Driving yeah, that Tahoe into the sunset. Yeah, I'm going to keep Paul. Sure. Paul at this, I'm keeping Paul at this point. Um, what about Russ? I just want to have a no, year of peace. Yeah, that, it's this one of those. This year was so tough for him. Yeah. Like. And I don't think he's like, he's not the type of player that deserved to have that type of season. This far his career, all the things that he's accomplished, the things that he's done for this season to be like that. It was like very sh- strange. Like yeah. from mm-hmm. the outside looking in, I was like, why is this like, everyone's like turning on Russell Westbrook like that. Like I thought that was very odd. And then I think he got traded and he felt like a little better. You could tell he was playing, mm-hmm. but it was still like the damage has been done like this year. Yeah, I'll keep him and Paul. Russ and Paul is better than Kawhi and Paul. Because you know Russ gonna come every, like it seems like Russ takes care of his fucking body. Yeah, he ain't I'm missing sure. bulk of games. He gonna come yeah. hard. He gonna practice hard. So, and they play together. Yeah, at OKC they got some good morale. So let's pretend like y'all are Westbrook, unrestricted free agent. Do you want to come back to this franchise? It all depends. I don't. I mean, I don't know the Clippers' uh, organization, um, but for him being home for a year. I, it'd be hard for him to just leave again. You know? He's he, he not going nowhere. Yeah, I know. If, if T. Lou saying we want him back, and Bomber's like we need this energy, he definitely coming back. Cause I don't think that the fans, the Clipper fans, dislike him as much as the Laker fans. I think that they would embrace him more because there's nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. We got nothing to lose. Just go out here and play hard. And how he played in the series, like yeah. they didn't say a chance. Like I don't think without PG and Kawhi, and the fact that he came every night. And was trying to will them to win some games. Like that, that holds a lot of weight, I think, to fans, of course. 100%. And now let's just flip it to the Clippers side. Obviously, this was. We were just on the Clippers side. But this is a job. At, no, from Westbrook. <laughs> oh. Damn, Gil. <laughs> he can't wait. He can't wait. Like, he like, get, this, oh, get these niggas out of here. <laughs> there, are, there are games tonight. Get these niggas Clippers out of here. Clippers are done. Let me host. Shit. Let's fall. Let's fall. Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, from the Clippers standpoint, this was like a job interview for Russ. Do you think the Clippers would want, want to bring him back? Yeah, I mean, I, I would. I mean, you, you, you're not going to find a player who, who does what he does. Uh, I'm sorry. Like, um, he is a walking triple-double. He is explosive. He's exciting. You know, he's passionate. If I'm going to put my money in a guy, I'm going to put my money in a guy who's going to come hard every day, every practice. I mean... If he goes over 20, he goes over 20. But I, I know, I can see that he puts the work in versus giving my money to someone. And I don't know what the fuck they do in the offseason. So Russ very much seems like a guy, he's, he's going to play his game. He hasn't really been able to adjust his game. He's going to do what he does. Mm-hmm. Does he need to adjust his game at all moving forward in the now kind of this, this last stage of his career? I mean, y'all talk to, you know, Le- Lethal Shooter about, you know, shooting woes and who can shoot, who, can, who can't shoot. And Russ is the only like the only thing he needs to improve and change and go into the the, the the next season in is just being a better shooter, more efficient. And if he comes back to the Clippers, it gives them a better advantage knowing that he's focused on 
a couple things, and that's keeping his body in tip top shape and making sure that he lasts the, the test of time and shooting, shooting that shit when you open, making that shit when you open. I've slandered Russ enough in the last two years to say, man, he's still that guy when, when he needs to be, right? So triple-double, like he said, walking triple-double, you can't throw that out the window. You can't just be like, yeah, we're going to pass on that because he can do it at any given moment. I want that type of asset on my team if I'm trying to make it somewhere. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's not the best shooter, but there's like a lot of guys in the league who can't shoot, but they can't do what he does either. Yeah. But I mean, for me, being a shooter, like I don't, I can't wrap my mind around that mentality of someone being that far away from me, like daring me to shoot, like how that messes with you. Like I've never experienced that. So I'm like, I can't speak on how that makes you feel. Cause I can't, I couldn't imagine holding the ball and someone's just like, excuse me, shoot it. I'm <laughs> like, chucking that shit. <laughs> okay, I'm, 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 I'm shooting. Out no hesitation. Why are you way over there? Yeah, I'm more perplexed than anything. Like, well, maybe that's what it is. Like I'm shooting. <laughs> And I'm talking shit too. Like I can brick it. You're gonna yeah, listen. <laughs> hey, I'm just gonna keep. First of all, first of all, just keep the defense honest. Like at the end of the day, you shoot it. We get a rebound. We get an O board. Something. But if you're just like holding it and then you do something dumb, like that's that's the game plan. Yes. The game plan isn't miss a shot. The game plan is make you overthink and do something dumb. Like yeah. the, the sad part is I don't I don't like I don't know why coaches hasn't prepared for this. One, if the guy's sitting in the lane and your guard has the ball and they're sitting there, what fucking play you think you're running? The play's done. The play's dead. Like, whatever that guy's doing fucked up the play, so you sitting there trying to pass all it. This shit done. Fuck all that. Do something. Drive. Drive to, how about this? Drive to the free throw line, see what he's going to do there. Just don't run him over. Yeah, drive to the free throw line. Drive to the dot. Is he still going to back up? Motherfucker, shoot that. Float I don't give a shit, but don't be sitting here trying to run a play no more. Wow. That shit is over with. Nobody's open. It's crazy how they defend him. So, you know, when we look at this, this Clippers, what was supposed to be the, this championship contender, you also look at the Nets with, with KD and Kyrie. But who was, who was more disappointed, in your opinion, the KD and Kyrie Nets or the Kawhi and PG Clippers? Clippers. Nets. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say the Nets. Yeah. Damn. It's KD and Co uh, Kyrie. You look at Kawhi and PG compared to them two, it's not even a question. Like, Y'all two supposed to be... All the way to the moon. I feel like the Nets thing, like, there's just, like, a lot of other stuff that was just going on over there that, like, messed that up. So, like, I'm not disappointed in them as players. I'm disappointed in, like, that organization and everything that, like, transpired over there. Whereas with the Clippers, like, they just got hurt. Like, they just can't stay healthy. Whatever. Yeah. But in Brooklyn, like, there was, like, just so much mess going on. Yep. Like, and you can't expect guys to, like, perform at a high level when all that is going on. People talking. People don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. People have no idea what goes on internally. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. And Stay COVID. There. Yeah. COVID fucked everything up for them. The mandates and all that goodness. That's what I'm saying. Are they going to say sorry to Kyrie for them? No. They need to. Because all the, didn't all the firemen and police officers back, they, they sue in the city for that. Yep. For what? Not a lot oh, of for mandatory. Work. Yeah, for yeah. mandatory and all those shots and stuff. Yeah. And, I just was just was like, if y'all going to do that, y'all got to at least stick, stick to it to the end for y'all to just let him play anyway. What was all that for? Not exactly. Yeah. Thinking they were going to break him? Yeah, yeah. like, no, yeah. ain't nobody. He was the only one standing for it. If you think about it, they was letting Bradley Bill come in to other arenas, come into Brooklyn and play, and then not let him play. Yeah, it that was, was the there, thing. There was, that, that's what I said. There was so many, there was so many other NBA players who did not have the shot. They did not have the shot, yeah. and, but they got to play and have fun, There's too. There's no logical way for them yeah. to, like, defend just, no. those decisions that they made about that, yeah. and they kind of just, like, swept it under the rug, and, like, that's a, that's, that was annoying. But that's why yes. Brooklyn is starting to get the Clippers curse put on them. All the bad shit they've been doing over the years, bad business, even for Kenyon, when Kenyon was talking about how he got traded from the Nets to Denver, he was like, yo, they've been doing a lot of, like, dirty, snizzy, leaky shit. That. <laughs> so this is like basketball karma? Yeah, happening? it's 100%. 100%. <laughs> a Minnesota going through it, the Clippers. The Clippers of the East? Clippers okay. of the East. Oh, yeah. They got the curse, too. So Clippers made it to Western Conference Finals. Nets, I think, Eastern Semis, losing to the Bucks. Katie's big-ass foot mm -hmm. with the far, far as they reach on their side. Let's talk about Paul George a little bit. He's been battling injury, but he seems like between Kawhi and PG, PG's the guy you'd want to stick with as a franchise. But knowing what we know now, 
Did the Clippers regret trading SGA and five first round picks for Paul George? I forgot they did that. Yes, they did. Danilo yeah. Gallinari too. Oh my gosh, yes. Do you regret it? It's hard, like, in and this was after it's SGA's to, rookie it's season. It's hard to say things like that yeah. in hindsight, knowing what we know. Yeah. We knew that he was finna yeah, well, we, start hooping like that. Would we keep him in order to for him to be the star back then? Like, but as I said, he wouldn't have been a star. He was a couple years away still. Oh, no. He's an okay I mean, I'm not saying it's not hard to be He's only 24 a star. now. I think he was, like, 21-ish. No, but what I'm saying is you have Kawhi. You would have had uh, you wouldn't have got William Kawhi. still. No, but I'm saying is you still had pieces that were still holding him back anyway. Yeah. So him going there, being by himself, was the big yeah. one. Well, you OKC. weren't going to get Kawhi without PG. So, you know, you made that move. Thought it was a good move, but I'm saying look at back now. SGA and Pfeiffer. Ooh, the five first rounders. I mean, five first rounders. I mean, I know SGA is happy. I mean, his game has just. Yeah. 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 For sure. And he probably needed, to your point, he probably needed that to get his game to the level. Because, mm-hmm. sure. you know, bringing in that other personnel, it might have been a. A shaky situation. Let me ask you a question, though. Is a guy like Bones Highland similar to a SGA? That that kind of is kind of. I like Bones. I don't think he, he's there yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, Just like SGA, though. Not, he wasn't there yet. No, he's not that. He don't got, you don't think he got the nah, type of game? Nah, he's more like Barbosa, that, uh, that type of six gotcha. man that comes gotcha. in. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah, SGA is like 6'6. Six, six. I mean, yeah, different. yeah, that's it's different. A, yeah, it's yeah. A, is it in no knock the ball? I love Bones. I love, love what he was doing in Denver. I'm glad that the Clippers started actually utilizing him, obviously, under unfortunate circumstances. But he got that dog in him. He, he don't back down from nobody. He's not afraid of anybody. But when we talk about this Clippers team, just looking forward, we got a new CBA coming look, that's looking to punish owners like Steve Ballmer for big, spending big. Ballmer's easily the richest owner in the league. I think the other nine owners beneath him combined still don't have as much bread as he does. Wow. Damn. He bought the Clippers for $2 billion back in 2014 from, from that shithead Donald Sterling. But now the team is valued at close to $4 billion. You know, things haven't gone in the way they, they wanted to on the court, but off the court, business is booming. Mm. So do you think that Steve Ballmer has any buyer's remorse? I'm pretty sure he don't have buyer's remorse because the team value went up, but um, <laughs> I'm sure that motherfucker should leave Los Angeles. Damn. I'm sorry. Go where? They got a new arena coming in Inglewood. They don't give a fuck who's it's, it's a it's a stepson. You're not gonna <laughs> listen. You're never gonna be. You're never gonna be it. I'm sorry. I feel like them moving makes them like more stepsonish. Like mm. they're like get out. No, like, they can get, get their own get their own thing here, here. L. A. Lakers will get all prime everything. Yeah. Prime stars. Prime women. Everything, right? Even the dancers, the the prettiest dancers come to the Lakers first. If they don't make it, they go to the fucking club. Money's the same, yo. It it's don't the same matter. You want the yellow and gold yeah. first. The porn stars go to the Lakers games. Yeah, you want to go Lakers first, then if we get rejected here, well, then I mean, we'll come you, over here. I mean, have you seen, like, I went to the, the Clippers game uh, last week, and I was just, like, looking at the crowd and who's courtside it's like night and day with like yeah. clippers and lakers yeah, like you the there. lakers you're like at a hollywood party with the clippers you like at a basketball game like yeah, it's crazy they put in different <laughs> different lights they do they put in different lights who clippers clippers Mm-mm. that's how trash they are <laughs> They need to just move like move to San Diego or like close to Mexico somewhere. <laughs> close so to what, Mexico. You know what I'm saying is get your own Seattle. your own yeah, identity. Super You're super not super welcomed super. here. When they were playing at Anaheim at the pond, those games actually used to be turned up and jumping. Obviously, the pond is a janky facility, mm-hmm. but it felt like that was. You got your own that, crew, your own crowd. That, but what I'm saying is, you're in Los Angeles, right? There's already a pecking order here. It's never gonna. It's like the Raiders and the Rams. Yep. There's a pecking order. You're never gonna get over. You're trying to win championships. It would not be in Los Angeles. So how does a rich? No one's gonna be like, oh, let, let me go to the Clippers. No, no one fucking does that. Reasonable price point though. No one tickets does are that. always cheaper. Yeah. When you got yeah. other teams coming into town, I want to see other guys perform. I can get that ticket for about twelve dollars. This is it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, twelve. That's what I'm saying. You you are a boy, that's that's your franchise. But you can get a suite you, for about eighteen dollars on, on any given night. You're a slumlord. They, they treat you differently though. Like when you walk to the door and you say you're a Laker player. Versus a Clipper a, player. That's. I wonder crazy. security treat like because it's the same crypto. They look at you. They look stuff. at you different. Uh, you play for who? Clippers party. <laughs> checking. They check it like this. Uh, <laughs> all right, going on in. Uh, you go. <laughs> going on in. <laughs> well, let's talk about Bomber a little bit. How does the richest owner in the league? Fix a broken franchise. We talked about the Clippers walls. It seems like he has enough bread to throw at it. What to Vegas? Yeah, I think I really, I didn't, I've never even thought about that. Like they need to move. Like 
when people are like, I want to play in LA, like, like <laughs> you'll say, you're not trying, I want to go play for the Clippers, I want to play, I want to go to the Lakers and play in LA. So it's like, even though the situation with Russ, he went from the Lakers to the Clippers I and mean, he's still in LA, but it's like, like less fanfare, less everything. Like I know the situation was different, but but a completely like, different shift for like less media, you know, all that. Yeah, stuff. like that, we have we stopped seeing Russ on again. Twitter you every have day. the less you you have. That's exactly what I'm saying. You get the less of everything. Mm. You're the less. You're the bottom feeding. That means you're. How can you be prime if you get all bottom feeding everything? Man, that means you got to wait in line. Even Ooh. when the Clippers were the better team, still it still don't matter. Shit. Yeah, I think like Lakers, right? Name, name Clipper greats. Marcus Johnson. That's it. They just named one. <laughs> you or something. <laughs> you <laughs> sure Shout out to Pops. <laughs> Shout out to Pops. But man, the last I'm one saying, it's, it's just one of those things where if, you, if you're really trying to take this thing seriously, go somewhere else. Like go to, go to uh, Seattle. Go to Vegas. Start your own. So when players are in free agency, they're like, Vegas? Oh, shit, I can go to Vegas. Like, you can get a KD to Vegas. You can get a John ja Morant in Vegas. You're not going to get a John ja Morant here if the Lakers are still here. Right. And if you do, he's going to be salty. Facts. That he's not playing. First over. of all, you're not, you're not going to get a John ja Morant. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. but if, hypothetically, if he did come, he's going to be salty that he's not a Laker. He's mm-hmm. not a Laker. They got selfies covering the banners. <laughs> so let's talk about Ty Lue a little bit. This will be our last thing on Clippers Go. I can already see on your face. You're getting annoyed with it. <laughs> sign, sign a five-year extension uh, with the Clippers this past October. Damn. Yeah. Wait, when? October 2022. Five years. I mean, give, the, give the man his bread. But there are reports the situation between him and the Clippers front office a little tense. Is Ty Lue the right coach for this Clippers team? How long has he been there? Bro, it's the Clippers. Why are we doing this? <laughs> yeah, we are a basketball show. It's the Clippers. Who gives a fuck what the coach is? It's a coach. Right? It don't matter what coach you have. It doesn't matter. It's Avatar in? It doesn't matter what coach you have, okay? You just put a coach in, put the suit on, just say run up and down. That's the Clippers organization. <laughs> That's the type of job I think he's doing, too. He's just an avatar. Just, yeah, just, there. just sit there and just blah. I mean, like, uh, they, made the pl- <laughs> they made the playoffs. Like, <laughs> Come on. This is a oh, successful oh. season. This is success. Playoffs. You done have success. Like, what, like right. if I'm the coach and blah, all right, y'all, look, go out there. You know that stupid shit coaches say, go out there and play hard. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, what? <laughs> the coaches never be like, go out there and play like shit. Fuck it. No, like, go out there and play hard and then snap a couple bit. What's the name? Like, you really care? Yeah. Like, ah, time out. Get time out. Sex. Other than that, it's just fucking Clippers, bro. Damn. Bad News Bears without the winning at the end of the movie. <laughs> Will we ever see winning at the end of the movie with the Clippers? No. For- How long have we been saying that? We've been... We, we've been. Got to change this. We've been here. We we lived here this whole time. It's got to change. I thought they was gonna get closer this year. They thought this was gonna be the year. I thought if they were healthy, it this seems was like the only year that they looked their like best to me. They could, to do yes, yeah. doing with the healthy with PG coming back second round, Kawhi last in first round. But we talked about all this. The reason why I'm like I'm got trust issues with these motherfuckers because these niggas ain't never healthy. Pray for the Clippers, y'all. If you have a friend who's or a Clippers don't. fan, <laughs> or check don't. in on them. It's a downtime for them right now. They have beat the Lakers 12 times in a row. No, I can't. No. Ain't the banner. Listen. Like, but, exactly. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's, but that's like, they're all, the better L.A. team, and no one cares. No one Clippers? Cares, no, Clippers fans right now, this is a great-ass season. Right. They beat the Lakers the whole time. They're fucking in there. This is amazing. Bragging For right. them, this is amazing. Bragging right. <laughs> This is amazing. This is an amazing year. Well, let's keep this thing moving, Gil. I think you have. Yeah, oh, you want to hit that. Okay. Make that call. Gil, pull out the. What kind of phone? What is that? iPhone, what? 13, 14, 12? New. 11? New. 14? We're trying to... <laughs> I just got the same one. It's just in the box at the crib. Until mm-hmm. I retired the Bronze Slayer right here. My trusty iPhone 8. Y'all ready? So this is Gil's arena. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's how we do it. This is a live show, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, we go through, you know, technical issues. And it's a black show, so you know it's not it's not funded like we, the Caucasian experiences. But this is Gills Arena, so you you know to already expect the unexpected. <laughs> there up? it is. Hold on, hold on. Oh wait, that's <laughs> okay. so cool. You can't hear me. Oh no. You hear me? I can't hear you. White people, man. Somebody get fired. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Where are the white people coming from? They're, they are doing their best you know in the black control room. You always blame it on white folks. 
Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. This is a live show, ladies and gentlemen. You get the inside look at what goes on behind the scenes of Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. While we're here and while we're waiting for this, this interview to get started, go ahead and download the Underdog Fantasy app. It's a perfect Thank time you. right now. Yeah, I uh -oh. can hear you. Uh-oh. We can did you it. Can you hear me, Gil? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can, can you hear me? hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Hang up. Hang up and call back. Okay. We're going to get it right. It's pristine, though. Uh-oh. There go the text, though. Cover up. <laughs> <laughs> we alive. Do you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh -oh. What's up, baby? There we go. What's up, homie? <laughs> Good, we got your Good former teammate, you, Javaris Critton, in the building. Yes, sir. Javaris, can you hear all of us, too? What's going on, brother? What's up, brother? Hello, hello. Hi. This is, this is TV history right this now. This is very cool. YouTube history, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So, Javaris, how you doing? What's up, man? My man, 100 grand. <laughs> Javaris, how you doing and how does it feel to be home? Can you hear him? Nah, it's kind of a little awkward. You, you can just ask, good, you, but I can't you just hear anybody else. You Go can't ahead. hear nobody else. Oh. You got to ask the question. He said, how does it feel to be home? Oh, man, it's a great feeling. It's a blessing, man. God is merciful. Uh, not taking it for granted at all. I'm super ecstatic, just enjoying the most simple things, enjoying my family, being able to watch games in, in a comfortable environment, you know. Man, you, thankful. Hey, you're glowing, man. Shit, I ain't even gonna lie, man. <laughs> I'm supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> right, what's your next one? Oh, so so next one. Right, Javar, can you hear me too, or can you just hear Gil? Okay, you can't hear me. You. So just talking about... Just, it's just light skin. So, I mean, we all know about that situation in the Wizards locker room in 2009. Many people have assumed that there was no, beef between y'all. There was beef between y'all, though. But oh, y'all okay. remained very close. So, you know, I was asked, what have you been like as a teammate to Javaris and just, just helping him out throughout these past few years? You heard him? So, nah, repeat that for me, Gil. So, so he was basically saying, you know, how the media thought we were like uh, enemies in that, uh, during the locker room situation. Um, and what, what, what was our real relationship like? Man, it's crazy to have killed this team for such a long time and have had the media create their own narrative of the situation. You know, just not being able to speak about it. But, man, uh, man, you were super close. You was my partner. We used to hang out all the time. Uh, sometimes I would go out to Gita's room and we would just talk. We would just kick it, uh, talk about random stuff. Sometimes we would, you know, hit the club together. You know, this, this was a friend, this was somebody I really hung. Mm -hmm. And the media created a, a completely different narrative because of the situation. Mm -hmm. And they just took it to a whole nother level, man. Yeah, like I, I remember like... We, we, like people I, really have no clue. I know, I, I, know. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> no. it, it, was, it was weird because like when we wasn't talking, we were just looking the, uh, you look in the paper, right? And like, this nigga said this? Oh man. And it seemed like that's what was going on, that, you know, most of the things that was, uh, like, getting misconstrued was the paper, not us. Yeah, I think we were both dumb. And, um, I mean, the media controls the masses, man. They can manipulate a lot of people. And we were too, you know, I was younger than you, but you were still young at the time. And, like you said, picking up the paper or looking at something online, and they're twisting words and making it seem like this person is saying this. And now we're trying to have this, like, false grudge. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, man, I can't believe that. I can't believe you did that. And it never happened. This person never said it. So it was almost like we allowed the media to, like, divide us. Mm -hmm. Because if people could see how close we used to be, man, and just the, the camaraderie, the, the conversations we had, the things that we shared with each other. Uh, I was just talking to my cousin, Woody. I don't know if you remember him, but... You know, sometimes we'll hit the club and it just be me, you, and him. Yeah, yeah. Like nobody else. Yeah. No other teammates. Just us two and my cousin or, or just us two sometimes. Or us two and a trainer or us two and a masseuse or something like that, you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's crazy because even though, like, we were going through that situation, we were still talking. Even though, like, the lawyers was like, oh, don't talk to him right now. We were still, <laughs> we were still doing our thing. Yeah, we were still communicating, man. It, it just... It's messed up how it all played out, man. People could have just thought the truth, like I said. And um, 
and not twist words and twisted stories because you know negativity sells, drama sells, mm -hmm. and so they did their job. They created chaos, and uh, unfortunately, it, it ended up in a bad way for the both of us. But if they had painted the truth, I think the outcome, I think everything would have been completely different. True, true. It would have been a different understanding. Yeah, true. Like uh, the last time I seen you, when we was at 360 working out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Three, was yeah, we were at 360. Yeah. We, had a, we had a long conversation. We stood outside talking for maybe, would you say, like an hour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. about an hour. Yeah. Man. So we had random guys walking by, like, man, I'm proud of you, brothers, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> how do we stay connected? Oh, uh, just over the years? Yeah. I mean, we found some type of way to keep in contact, but, you know, whether it was me having your number saved in my phone or uh, even when you switch numbers out, we just knew the same people and they knew that we needed to talk. So, you know, we stayed connected. You stayed in my corner. Um, you know, we've had our ups and downs too, though. You know, I want sugar coat. Yeah. Um, but overall, we stay connected, man. And, you know, look at it now, we're here. Yeah, like usually, like, uh, if we did have a problem, it was uh, Quran that put us back together. Like, uh, yeah, Quran put us back together. Somebody somebody that's close to both of us, they be like, man, y'all need to talk, man. Yeah. It was always yeah, me. So, we never had our problem. We fuck heads about stuff. I'll get mad at you about stuff, but, <laughs> you know, we always come back around because, you know, that's just, that's how brothers are, man. We were bumpy heads, but, you know, come right back around to each other. Yeah, that was the, uh, that was really our, our, um, like, over the last few years, whenever we got, like, like, we had disagreements, it's because I did some shit on Instagram. Right, I'll do some shit on Instagram. <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, that's, man. The, that's that shit I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Lose my number. Hey, man, <laughs> man you, 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 set, you set your pranks in and jokes, man. I mean, you held it funny, don't get me wrong, but some situations I'd be like, man, I can't believe it. There ain't no way this shit just went. <laughs> the, 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 the funniest shit be like, you like, you like, lose my number. Like, motherfucker, lose your number. Like that, that, that shit used to be funny, man. But how's the family, though, for real? Nah, everybody's going to them. Everybody's thankful I'm home. Um, I mean, it's just as ecstatic as I am, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, everybody's glowing, everybody's cheesing. I'm you know, super thankful. Everybody's good. Have you been you know, watching? Family is everything. Have you been watching, uh, have you been watching playoffs? Of course. You know, I got to stand two of my Lakers, man. You think I got to head <laughs> off? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't got nothing to do with me getting drafted by the Lakers that was playing for them like I'm a real Lakers fan. For real. Uh, so, 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 Lakers, Grizzlies, what you got? <laughs> Over with. We don't need to talk about that no more. Yeah. Dylan Brooks, we don't need to talk about him no more. Like, get ready for next season. You think we going to, uh, <laughs> you think we going to the chip? I definitely do. And I'm not being biased. I just think we have, we now have all the people that we need. You know, at first, like, people trying to stack, you know, big threes and big fours, which I feel like Boston created, uh, you know, with Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, um, Paul Pierce, and he ended up being a big four, because I don't think anybody could for Ray John Rondo against the talented as he is a future Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, everybody kind of jumped on that bandwagon and felt like that was, you, you needed that to go to the camp, you needed that to win the chip. And, you know, when they traded Westbrook, we got a lot of pieces, a lot of valuable pieces, a lot of talent. Um, so I think we got all the pieces in place to do it. Okay, okay. Did you, were, were you on the prison team? Yes, well, man, I love basketball so much, bro. Like, I, how could I not be? <laughs> Was it like that shit on TV, though? Motherfucker just fouling? Yeah, but not when you play under the whistle. You know, if you play playing on a yard or something like that, like, yeah, they get real physical. You got people that have lost teeth. You know, God been merciful in a lot of ways. I still got all my teeth. Uh, <laughs> thankful for that. But uh, under the whistle, it's, it's, it's a lot better. You know, people going to miss calls just like they do for teeth. But it's just, it's something for the guys. We got a lot of talent in that place. Mm -hmm. A lot of talent, a lot of people that just made mistakes. You know what I mean? They, they never got the opportunity, but a lot of talent. You, you thinking about playing in the big three this year or in the future? 
Yeah, I definitely would consider that, man. I, I love the game. I can still play. I can still move. So uh, I think I end up putting the ball down like if I can't move no more. Mm -hmm. It's just I'm, I'm, I'm that slow, you know, then I put the ball down. But right now I can still go. Okay, okay. Uh, what would you tell your younger self? Oh, man. I don't even think we got enough time, man. <laughs> But uh, leave that nigga Gil alone, boy. I would have been more humble. I was always a hard worker, but I would have been more humble and just more patient. Mm -hmm. Patience is key when you're young. I think that you know you come into the league and most guys are one and done, and you're trying to compare yourself. Mm -hmm. Like if you were ranked top ten in high school, and then you go to college one year and you get drafted and you're looking at a person that was probably like ranked 30th uh, in the top 50, get more playing time than you. And like, man, I know I, I'm better than this. And it's just the opportunity that, and you start comparing yourself to other people like, man, like, what's going on? And sometimes you just got to be patient. Mm -hmm. You got to wait your time. You got to stay down and keep grinding. So I think that was one of my problems. Like I wanted to play like right away. And I was mm -hmm. on a team with Kobe and Derek Fisher, the Mark Odom. Yeah. You know, like, greatness. But I still wanted to play. And I would get frustrated and start down myself, losing my confidence. And, uh, you know, that, that's just not good. If you start losing your confidence as a pro athlete, it's never good. But definitely, you know, patience. Patience and humility. Yeah. And the reason I say humility is because I, I had a situation with Kobe. Love him to death, man. Like, but when I came in, um, I didn't speak to him. And I walked past him like seven times and didn't speak to him. Now he, he probably was looking at me like, who the hell is this kid? Like not speaking to me, I'm Kobe. Mm -hmm. But it was more so like to show him that, man, I'm here to play with you. Like I'm, I'm, I used to be a fan, but now we're on the same team. You know what I mean? I'm here to play with you. And he hit me on my chest and he was like, what's up, young fella? He spoke to me first. And it, that, you know, something like that can come off his air. You know what I mean? I was just young. I wanted, I had so much to prove. I had a chip on my shoulder. And uh, me and Kobe used to go at it in practice. No exaggeration. Elbows, cursing. I was only 19, though. Mm -hmm. So if I could talk to my youngest self, it's like, show Kobe that you got heart, but don't go too far. Like, you're still Kobe, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't do too much. Even with me and you, like, you was a big brother to me, like, Go at Gil, talk trash to him. That's still, that's still Gil now, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, we, you know, since we do reflect, you know, when we get old, okay, you know, we do reflect on when, um, as we get older, like, um, if you had to, you know, tell, you know, like somebody like a John Morant or some of the young kids that's, you know, looking at hip hop in a way that's not healthy for their careers, what would you tell them? Looking at hip hop? You know, you know, like we we like we're we're really influenced by when I say music, like when we're listening in you know, in games, when we're getting ready for games, right? We have that music that get us right. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, trying to live, you know, as a basketball player, trying to, you know, live that, that style when it's really not us. Like, what would you tell somebody, you know, that's, that's, that's coming up, you know, of the hoop side and... <laughs> you just got to separate. Because, honestly, some people come up in that environment for real. Like, I was a person that grew up in that environment for real. Come up in a project, I was raised in a certain type of way. You know what I mean? So you have to have a, a separation from that, especially to become a professional. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's hard for young guys because when everything is going good for you, it's hard to tell who's who. Mm -hmm. So everybody's a champion, everybody's a yes man. All the women are there. So you're kind of doing what you want to do. And you're also being misled at times. You got to think, these guys are 19, 20, 21 years old with a hundred million dollars, two hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. They got a lot of yes men, a lot of tag along around them. So sometimes the influence comes from the outside. It might come from 
somebody in your old neighborhood, you know what I mean? But what I would tell somebody like John Moran is just to stay focused, man. You know, he's a world-class athlete, world-class talent. Um, he's reached a level that a lot of people dream of. You know what I mean? Like, my son mm-hmm. loves John Moran. Mm-hmm. When I tell you love him, he loves John Moran and Steph Curry, love him. And my son asked me about the situation with him. He was like, Dad, is he in trouble? Is he bad? Like, nah, he's not a bad person. He's the, he's the person that made a mistake. Still look up to him. You've been looking up to him. Don't let anything the media put out, you know, change your mind on that. He's still a good person, a great kid. He just made a mistake. Mm-hmm. And we don't know where it came from. We don't know whether it was the influence of, you know, rap music in our culture or something he was going through or somebody in his camp. You never know. Mm-hmm. We, can't, we can't get into his mind, but, you know, I really wish him the best. Like, he's going to do great things, but I think this is something that people are going to sweep under the rug and forget about. It's something that he learned from. He'll, he'll never make that mistake again. Yeah. And I'll be glad when people get off his back, honestly. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right. We got one more. Oh, how, uh, how did uh, Kobe's death affect you? How did what now? Kobe's death affect you. Man, that hit me hard, man. Uh, I was actually in the hole when I found out about it. And uh, it was a guy, like, talking out loud. Like, you know, you have people talking out the door, saying all types of crazy stuff. It's, sometimes people lose their mind back there in the, in the place that I was at when I found out. And uh, a guy was like, oh, we did. And he was joking. Like, he said in a joking way. And I laid down like this guy. It's crazy. But then I, when I laid down, something told me to get up. And the officer was walking by, man, and he knocked on my door. He was like, man, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the man gone. And I shared real tears, man. Like, I thought about, you know, the times we shared it, just because it was, it was brief before I got traded. Um, we were close, man. He was a good dude. Like, I was a rookie. He could have treated me like, or Ricky or treated me like I was a nobody, not speak to me. He would always like teach me about the game. Mm-hmm. If he was coming out the game, he'd be like, hey, you see how his feet planted? You see why I attacked him that way? You see why I guarded him this way? And he would just, you know, embrace me. So it, it really hit me hard, man. And I remember um, one of the good memories I had with him is that I got a chance to ride to the airport with him. And this is a big thing with Kobe because Kobe is kind of like, I won't say anti-social. He, he hangs around like-minded people, so he don't have a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. And he'll tell you this. You, you're just not going to hop in the car with him and go anywhere or go to the airport. And uh, I was able to ride with him to the airport. And uh, we just had to talk about basketball, about working on my jump shot, about uh, like if I stayed down, like, it was greatness inside of me. Stuff like that I can never forget. Mm-hmm. I remember for the rest of my life. And, I hate, it. I hate that he's gone, but his legacy lives forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. You got any more? I think you good, brother. Okay, everybody, everybody say bye. <laughs> Tell me, appreciate it. I appreciate y'all having me. Wow, that was deep. My man. Welcome Rashad, back. Man, get at me, bro. Welcome home, <laughs> B. You know we got we, it, we got old shit to talk about, my nigga. You know. Oh yeah, for sure. This shit is so, <laughs> he's wild, man. <laughs> Hey, that's my man right there, though. I know, I know. He cool as shit, man. <laughs> hey, tell the kids yeah. I said hello, man. And uh, my hit okay, you after this. Cool. All right. All right, babe. Damn, welcome the home, man. Welcome home. Oh, Gil's Arena. We got to get him to pull up to the show. Uh, his PO won't let him do that right now. Okay. I mean, it's, but it's, when, you know, he's he's on house arrest, my man. Yeah. I don't know if he's on house arrest, but he on stay your ass in Atlanta arrest. <laughs> we'll bring the show. Stay your ass in Atlanta arrest. We'll bring the show to that. <laughs> you got this oh, oh. <laughs> nah, but Javar Green, we appreciate you pulling up, but now we got to keep the show moving. Uh-huh. It's time for a little hibachi time. Let's go. Hibachi time. So we already talked about the Clippers. Let's talk about the Clippers some more, Gil. Come on. I'm just fucking with you. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> Let's talk about the other side of that Clippers Suns series, the Suns. The Suns advanced to the Western Semis after the game five win over the Clippers. And despite the addition of KD, Devin Booker is showing that the Suns are still his team. And bringing pride back to the light skinned community. Mm. Look at mm. that. Mm. So, 
So Deba capped off the series by dropping 47 points, 10 assists, and four rebounds. He shot 70% from the field, 57% from three in this closeout game. The Suns had like a 20-point lead. Clippers came back. D-Book put the team on his back, got him to that next round. So question for you, we'll start with you, Gil. Has Devin Booker been the best player in the playoffs so far? So far in the playoffs? Actually, probably. Mm. I mean, in the playoffs? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. He's Jimmy been the most right consistent there. one. I put Jimmy Butler You got right me, there. De'Aaron Fox, Steph. I mean, guys have been doing it. And it's tough because he's going against the undermanned Clipper squad. Whoa. But two 40-point games, a 38-point game, I mean. He's doing his damn thing. Yeah, he's doing, he's doing his thug thizzle. He's he's still a, pros. They're still pros. Even though they're, not, <laughs> they're, still pros. they're still pros. What he's doing is still very impressive. Let's try what you mm-hmm. think. There, there are a lot of guys performing. Um, but I go back to a lot of the points that I said before. Like, this was Book's team. Everybody was like, nah, any team KD come on is his team. I'm like, nah, man, it's... He got drafted to this team. It's his DNA. It's a part of him. He he needs to show that, and he's been doing that. Like, just because KD come here don't mean that I got to stop doing what I do. And I love that about him and his game because he's he looks unbothered. He's not tripping on, oh, well, I should make this pass to KD because he open. That's what the Warriors were doing when they were trying to get him acclimated. Book like, nah, I got a job to do. Because when he seen that confetti coming down, he was like, fuck. Fuck, I missed my shot. This time, he's like, I'm not trying to miss this shot this time. How much has having KD on this team made D-Book's job even easier now? Of, I mean, of course it makes it easier. Yeah. Um, I think it, 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 it puts a spotlight on his real talent, right? You over there sitting in Phoenix, you know, no matter what number, no matter what your numbers were, nobody was respecting it anyway. Mm. You know, so the fact that KD's there, it forces people to watch. So now everyone can see that, oh, shit, you might be <laughs> one or two best shooting guard in, in, in this league. Yeah. And, you know, now we need to start recognizing it. And I think that's the importance of KD being there. Other than that, you know, them two playing together, you know, you know, this series might be books. Next series might be KD. You know, they both might be, you know, double teaming, you know, um, Western Conference Finals. So it, it all depends. You know, right now this is book series and he's playing well. I mean, yeah, we were saying that earlier, like, People are talking about, oh, KD is not really being utilized. KD this, but he still was scoring 30 points in these games. And, like, it's not really a bad thing that KD doesn't have to, like, assert himself completely 100%. They still got all these games to play. Like, they still trying to play till June. Mm-hmm. Like, it's April. Like, so I think it's, it's been great. And like you said, D-Book is this, he's not playing any differently than he's ever played. Like, I think he's just more at ease. I think he doesn't play for the fanfare, for the media. I think he's one of the few players that just kind of just – Hoops. And now everyone's just watching because mm-hmm. Katie's on the team. So I think he's just, he's always been solid to me, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. So we're going to talk Katie in a second, but let's talk about the, this Suns team just a little bit more. So once uh, Kawhi, you know, no PG, once Kawhi went down after game two, many thought the Suns would just roll through the Clippers. They did. Right. <laughs> the score of the game, the score of that game didn't really tell the full, like when you look at the end of a game and the score, like that score didn't like tell the But even the game five, game. up 20, you think, all right, we're going to put them away. It's yeah. curtains. I mean, listen, it's easy to come back. I mean, we were up 24 oh. reason. We're up Without quiet PG? It don't matter, bro. It don't matter. Yeah. Right? He hate the Clippers. But listen, what I'm he saying is we don't know. Listen, it's easier for them other guys because we didn't scout them. We don't know who they are. They come in here just playing AAU basketball, bro. I don't know who this man is. Who is you? Yeah, who is you? <laughs> got to start looking at shit on the back. Uh, who is you? Who is oh, this guy? Where you come from? Yeah, you know what I mean? So it was easy for them to come back. So are the Suns still the favorite to get out of the West? Mm. Yeah. Now, oh. Listen, yeah. my Lakers is here, yeah. man. Oh, it's okay. the Lake show. I don't know. I just. You pushing the Lakers to the favorites? Oh, Lord. Bro, the Lakers are always my favorites. But are they the favorites? The Lakers? Are the Suns the favorites? You think the Suns? No. Use your vows. Think, He's not here. I think He's the not Lakers listening. Have you see how many times you got the, into <laughs> the favorites? Huh? Like, Over the Suns? Yes. Who? The Lakers. I think, well, they, they still got to win. To win it all? They still got to win. They still got to win. Or just to come out of the West? You saying come out of the West? Suns already the, there. The, the Lakers, Lakers still got a still series, got a series to win. Exactly. Come on, man. Stop with the series. It is three. Gil, we are, we playing? they are playing in Memphis tonight. 
We're going to whoop fresh. that trick. I hope they, I hope they play that today. <laughs> whoop that trick because that's what we're doing over there. I think the Grizzlies might, might fuck around and get one. It's 3-1? It's 3-1. I feel like right Memphis now. is either going to win it's or they're going to lose by 30. Yeah, like, it's, 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 yeah, it's one of those. That's Dylan Brooks bounced it. back game, girl. But at the end, he saw the comment. Dylan Brooks is out of here, bro. He saw the comment. He saw yesterday's show, girl. The Suns got to go through Joker and him. Yeah. Them boys playing well. So that's what I'm saying. They're going to beat each other up seven. Go, this is going to be a seven-game series. So who next for the Lakers? Huh? Who's next for the Lakers? They probably like old-ass Golden State Warriors. <laughs> old-ass Golden State. Oh, but they still got to be Sacramento, too. They got to be Sac. So that's the matchup. The winner I mean, Sac. I was looking forward mm. to a Golden State Memphis series. I really was. For what? Because it's just so petty. It's and so Dylan. stupid. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> but I was wanted just to see the drama Warriors Grizzlies over Warriors just potentially just Lakers. No, Warriors I think Lakers. Like is... Before, before ba- yeah, before everything okay. kind of imploded. Okay. Like I feel Lakers. like the rise and fall of the Memphis Grizzlies this season needs to like be studied. Like <laughs> they went from like everybody's favorite to like most hated in yeah. like six weeks. Yeah. yeah. And it was insane how that all played out. Warriors. The Warriors Lakers will be amazing. Is is. It's going to be trash. You, what do you mean trash? You said Cause, Warriors, cause, Lakers. Because Draymond the... loves him some LeBron. <laughs> ain't no ain't no, ain't no, no heated challenge there. It's it's all wine and cigars. They going to chill together after games. Right. That's a mature series. Yeah, I'm cool on that. It's like, mature. ain't no. <laughs> yeah. It's too Golden, mature. Golden State of Memphis is childish and petty, and it, would be, it was going to be fun TV. to watch. It was going to be TV, entertainment. Right. This shit's going to be for uh, what well, you 60 this, minutes. This might, this the Lakers be like, watch might be one of the minutes. most highest watch playoff series. I mean, it's going to be the highest oh, watch. for sure. In a, in a cool Rock? minute. Just we ain't going to see no Strip writers at work. It's going to be the highest watch. Hey, what? Draymond not going to be stepping on a chest. Shit, yeah. he going to try something. Draymond got to guard what, AD? No, Braun. He going to guard Braun. Head up. Yeah, they gonna, that's when Braun going to no, have his 50 go, points. Yeah, he's going to guard, yeah, guard Braun. I mean, we've already seen him try to punch Braun. You know, give him one of them patented dick punches. Man, I'm cool. I want to see Sack. Sack, well, sack Lakers. Okay. Then you want us in a championship. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. Hey. He don't, I don't mind. We already know he don't like Draymond, nor does he like the Lakers. So this is a horrible season. This is I, a horrible. I fuck with Draymond. Rashad, what is it going to take to get you back on the Lakers bandwagon? Man, uh, Austin Reeves contract. Coming back or you want him gone? Hell no, because if he signs anything more than like 35, he's going to be <laughs> He gonna be. He gonna be. Austin about to get a hundred from somebody. He gonna get a hundred from somebody. But look, whatever. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Also, keep fucking balling though. Keep balling. He hates hates everyone. Keep balling. We don't even know who he actually likes. You don't even know who I'm actually is. We don't even know. We don't even know. A whole different alien. This is the first time he hasn't had his crown on. To be honest. Man, I just felt you it's know right there, I though. felt I felt oh, extra yeah. cute today, man. I just want to put it on the side. <laughs> oh, so, oh, okay. So we, we all got a hey, female on the no, no, show no, no, the no. muscles and when he puts it on, he feels ugly. <laughs> feel real ugly, man. I can put that bitch on, distract all y'all. Okay, today. okay, we got it now. Now we know. But let's talk about KD. We mentioned solid series, twenty-eight, what, eight rebounds, six assists. But let's be real, he hasn't really looked like that KD that we know he can get to in the playoffs, which, you know, if I'm the Nuggets, I'm probably a little concerned about with this series getting ready to start. So heading into this Suns and Nuggets series, will the Suns need to rely on KD more moving forward in the playoffs? It's whoever has the advantage. Um, you know, the playoffs is not about, you know, you necessarily, it's about who has the advantage in this series. Um, you know, Book and KD, you know, more Book, I mean, you know, you know, round two is going to be Book still. You know, he don't really have a defensive sh- Defense is a shooting guard that's going to be checking them. Mm-hmm. And if you do, then KD's free. So it's going to be one of those two where, you know, even, you know, any given you know, day, one of them is going to go off. Yeah. I'm, I, one's going to have 50 this round. 100%. I'm rolling with the, um, the breakdown of it all, right? So you break the, the series down, like you just said, what shooting guard on Denver defensively is going to be able to hold book, mm-hmm. switch off on KD and hold KD. You're looking at Murray. Brown, Pope, and uh, MP. MPJ. So between those three, Michael Porter don't want that matchup mm-hmm. with KD. So KD already licking his chops like, I'm about to cook this young fella because he don't know when to show up. Then you got Pope and Brown, hard-nosed defensive players who are going to have to chase Book around. But Book already know he get to my spots, go in the pick and roll with the big, switch off, do my thing. 
You look at outside of that breakdown, man, Denver don't really got nothing that's going offensively. You know what I'm saying? Like they they not matching up. So I'm I'm definitely rolling with the Suns. What about the Nuggets on offense? Joker. It's all Joker. Aiden gonna have to show up and play some damn defense. And you don't like Aiden, so it's, like, <laughs> it's already like because it, no. But the only thing I don't like about um, he's an Arizona guy, Gil. No, 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 no. Uh, on defense, where because Joker passes the ball, also now this is when Book and KD gotta really pay there attention because go. they're gonna get backdoored mm-hmm. like shit, right? And you know they're gonna get you know those guys. They might have thirty, but they're gonna be giving up seventeen to twenty five just because you know those players on Denver knows how to move. It'll be interesting. Like everyone's, everyone says, like defense wins championships, but it's like I don't think necessarily like the one-on-one matchup. It's gonna be like the scheme, the game plan. Like, like you said, Joker's such a good passer. Like he gets those guys so loose all the time. But I mean, KD and Book, you know, they could go for thirty each game. But you know, you have Jokic in the middle, triple double. You know, any given night. Like, what are they gonna do? How are they gonna adjust to that? You know, I don't, I'm not a big. I'm not high on eight either. But- like at all, actually. So I'm like, yeah, I not think, even a, a little bit. Not even a little bit. Never. What's the issue? I don't know. I just, I just don't like him. I just don't like how he yeah. plays. Soft, you, don't got, you don't know nothing. Oh, he's just so big. Yeah, Why do you play like that? <laughs> <laughs> You're but huge. Even, but even like what you said, with, with Denver, them being able to run the Suns around through Joker, making KD and Book play defense, tiring them out. Yeah. That's really the only chance. Offense. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, I used to hate. Uh, the only person that was kind of like Joker, but not to the extreme, was like uh, Chris Webber. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Who passed him and Vlade that passed the ball. So when they had the ball, that's when you had to actually like focus on defense because Mike Bibby then was coming off screens, passing. When Mike Bibby had the ball, like he was easier to guard because, you know, if he looks at his shoes, he's going to shoot the ball. Mm. Right? <laughs> 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 shoes, he's shooting, you know. Um, that, when he didn't have the ball, that's when he was backdooring and stuff like that. So he was much harder to guard. When Chris Webber and Vladi had the ball. Man. So when you got a big who's capable of doing the stuff that Joker's doing, like those guys, from you as a guard, that makes that yeah. shit even that much. Yeah, because you're like, let's say the ball went in the shack. Like, I ain't got to get the yeah. rest. Right? That's, right. that's you that's can fell out. Yeah. 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 Worry about yourself. Black I do like this fake there. dig down. Like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just fake dig. I ain't really trying to get reach. down there. He passed the ball. A back little swipe down. Yeah. No. Yeah. It was like guys like Scola, Brad Miller, mm-hmm. yep, yep. guys that sit on them pinch posts and yep. pick you apart. So. Need y'all predictions, early predictions. I'm going to start with you, Lexi. Suns, Nuggets, who's winning the series? How many games? Who has, who has the first home games? Uh, Nuggets has home court advantage. Mm, I'm going to say Suns in seven. Ooh. Mm. Gil? Suns in seven. Rashad? <laughs> Suns in six. Okay, you think it's not even going to get to that seventh? Yeah, I think, I think they figure it out. They figure it out after game three. After game two, they win in game one. Who sons? Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they win one, they, they split, then they go back home, win two, and finish it out in Denver. Nah, they would, uh, game six would be. They in split game. one, two. Okay. He hot, he hot. No, no. Nah. If it's Denver, is the. Yeah, team. they'd win one in Denver, win both in Phoenix, but then they'd have Come to. Come back and win. That would be seven. I told in, you he. In Denver. That, no. This five. is why I don't want to smoke. That's six. So if they split, he's, one, this, one. Yeah, that would be fine. Oh, back, lose and then chat, come back and win. The so then they would win in. So they lose in Denver. In, they would win in Phoenix. And come back in Phoenix. Come back in Phoenix. Phoenix. Okay. Yeah. No, for sure. Right. We'll be accurate at some point. I know. <laughs> and for y'all, we, we know what about, you meant. At some point. We know what you meant. We know we're talking about meant. the altitude in Denver. How much of an issue is that for y'all coming in as players? Like, them lungs burning? What is it like? Oh, I've been this, I went to one USA training camp, and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a serious thing. It, it was it, okay. It was so serious that um, I had put that um, I had the chamber in my house. Yeah. I was training with a mask on, getting ready for USA basketball. Like, <laughs> did it help? It helped me a little. Okay. I mean, I I wasn't dying as bad as other players, but see that, that mask. Hard. So the mask only it it, it uh, closes for breathing itself. Yep. Right. So the the tin itself, while like you sleep in it. Where it cuts off your oxygen, so your heart's be beating faster. Okay. So you get in shape faster. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Right. So um, it helps. It helps. I mean, you know, you, it, it helps. Like it's one of those things where when you get there in town, 
you know, you need to run some line yeah. sprints yeah. and shit like that, like the night, the night of, the night before. I mean, the night before, just get it out, you know, so yeah. that you ain't getting that shit in the game. So should the Suns maybe consider going early? They probably get some work in. I mean, if you a hooper, man, you hoop. No, like, but shit. This is what I this is what I felt about Denver. Like the first three minutes, if you can get past that first three yeah. minutes and get your second win, you good. But if you out of shape and you ain't really used to just going hard, period, it's going to be tough. Like, my toughest challenge was the basketballs were cold. And it was always my hands were cold. Adjusting from anemic? Utah and Utah and Denver was the only two that were my, my hands were freezing, the balls were cold. I don't know what's going on. But the breathing side, it, first five minutes I was over it. Like, all right, I'm good. Catch a little sweat, you're good the to go. The ball cold? I never heard of it. The ball was cold. Never heard of the ball. Freezing. The, Utah, the ball wasn't cold in Utah? My hands is cold, not the ball. Ball freezing. Mm-hmm. Brick. Interesting. Brick. Brick. <laughs> 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 What's good? Give, give, the give only ball. time I've, I've felt something similar to that was when we played at Wisconsin on top of, it was on top of an ice. Yeah. That's probably one of my worst games in college. But you said that Big Ten, like, like going Everything to Michigan, Michigan State, cold winter. as hell, oh. everywhere. Hockey season's over when they when they start. Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't get that ice. Mm-hmm. So like the NBA, the coldest arenas is fucking Phoenix. No, because it's hot outside. Yeah, it's hot outside. Yeah, and they have hockey, so they have the hockey under. So it's really cold in arenas sometimes. Like Boston it. too, huh? Boston is yeah. cold because they had the ice. Yeah, they had, when you have ice under there, it's horrible. Just, like, yeah. Oh. Staples same horrible. issue or no? The balls being cold. No, yeah, the heat the on. You got the, the, the staples on. Right. Now, especially when they put the um, they put those boxing lights in. Yeah. Okay. Like where they darkened the crowd and then the spotlight was on. Okay. Yeah. See, this is stuff. I mean, from my perspective, obviously that that is amazing just to know going in because you hear about all these things and playing in altitude, it feels like shit. You come yeah. fresh off a of blunt, like lungs is burning. <laughs> but it's an advantage. But after the league. You're not really thinking about that, but for these dudes to be able to adjust in just how long, because that lung burn in altitude is unlike any, you know, you do it, you do it out here, no big deal. But I don't, I don't think, I don't think, like, I don't think they use the altitude to their advantage. Nah. How should they? Press. Ooh. I be yeah, pressing the like fuck. They you said that shit fast. They gotta play that. They gotta <laughs> they play in there. The That's why a lot of people are like, "How is Joker such a good shape? Because he plays in Denver. Like yeah. he goes anywhere else." Yeah, he goes anywhere yeah. else. He can play 40, 48 minutes. He, he watched him play. He, he be really moving. Be I'd be like, this wait, when that shit. last their last game when he got that and one, like he full time. Hey, was it who was it? some whoever's post player was down there? Tired. I think it was Gobert. Gobert. Gobert was they still talking about. It. He was still in the paint on the other end, just running, running like. So you say press the ass in Denver. Press, uh, the first three, four, five minutes, I press the fuck out that team. Just to uh, see. Just, just to pick see. Them up. I'll be picking like up. You said uh, that first three minutes, you could get yeah. down eight. Yeah, I pick up I'll easy. Three that's minutes. A, that's I'll a pick tactic, up Chris Paul, bro. Full court, turn him, turn him, get him, t- get him fucking tired already. Wow, I didn't even think about that, bro. Like, that's they a, never use that shit to their advantage. Damn, first five minutes too, they're gonna be. <gasps> Trying to sub. They're gonna call that timeout really? quick as shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take this one and the yep. TV. All right, so let's move to the East. We gotta talk about get one of your favorite guards in the league. Trey. Trey Young! Yeah. So Trey is one of the most hated players in the NBA by fans and some of his peers. They voted him the 12th best guard in the East, the all star snubbery. I thought it was just light skin and hatred, but it feels like it's even more than that. Yeah, this is the drug policy. <laughs> they don't, they don't, they, 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 high. they smoking crack. <laughs> they high. But after the first two games of the Hall Celtics series, Trey was getting a, a lot of, a lot of criticism for his performance, and it was, it was, it wasn't Trey level. Let's just be real. But last three games, he's averaging 35 points per game. Uh, he capped off Game Five at 38 point performance with the, the three. I know the Celtics are ready to get this shit over. Hawk said the nay no to that. Do we have that game winner? Let's watch it. Let's just ooh. Look at him, Jalen Brown kind of lock. From deep like that? Mm. But rewind that? I That's ballsy. From deep very... like that? Fuck yeah. But Down one? But... Down one? Down one? No. That's a, ch- wait, hold on. That's a step, step back. Uh, no. Uh. no? Nope. Bam. We got some replays coming for y'all too. Don't That's know. amazing. Did they not expect Ooh. him? Dude. And you know, I said the garden's cold, but it feels uh, like uh, Trey's cold. That kind of looked like that Damian Lillard three on PG. I, I, look, gotcha. 
I need those shoes now. Oh, mm. hey, the Trey, Trey got some nice shoes. I will say that. I do like his shoes. I don't know if I'm allowed they to got, say that, but. His pop blessed me with a pair. I appreciate it. They were size 13. I wear a 14, but I still, <laughs> I still rocked them on a no chill. I think that Al Harrington episode, out of love and respect for the young family. But does Trey's performance in this th series change anything in your mind and your opinion about him as a Hooper? No. Not my mind. I mean, I'm, I mean, he's one of the top guards, you know, in the game. Um, you know, he's just not giving. You know, he's just not getting the love. Just, it's just, you know, you know, just when you're arrogant, when you're arrogant and you really, you know, do this shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like players, players don't like. That's not players. Just don't like trash talking. Like they want you to bust their ass in silence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They really. They want you to just. If you're gonna go score sixty, just score it silently, right? When you start like doing this shit right here, and the, the players hate that shit, right? It, it, I don't know why. It just just a little, just little things just irritate players, and then that's when the over you overrated. Like I just had fucking fifty on you, bro. Mm. Hey, it was just, it, it didn't look cute. <laughs> it's the punk players though, man. It ain't the the real hoopers. We we love that shit. Mm -hmm. Like to see you out there. If I'm playing against you and one of my defensive players is guarding you, and you out there. I said, man, switch, man. Mm -hmm. Switch. I got, let me knock him down a couple times, mm -hmm. right? Because I like that this nigga's turning up. But it'd be the, like, if you not built like that and you mad because another nigga built like that, that's just different. Yeah. Like, it's a different type of hate. And we had this conversation in one of our episodes about Trey being that guy and they just hate because he got that air to him. You know what I'm saying? And they just hate me because I still got the air to me. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> so it is what it is. <laughs> Shit. It's fine. I look at the chat, and a lot of them will try to climb your game, but they just don't realize because it's coming up. I'm a little bit older than you, but we all knew we all knew about Rashad McKenzie coming through, winning the natty, the bucket getting, throwing up the X in the oven. All of that, <laughs> man. All of that. But we're not gonna go to our memory lane just to prove a point. I I like a Trey Young because he that guy, just like Gil was that guy, just like Lex was that lady. Like when you can shoot that thing and play, the I hate love don't shooter. come. I love shooter. <laughs> I, I love threes. You know, I'm, I'm so happy the W's kind of we're kind of making that pivot, like valuing three point shooting more than you know post up, just back to the basket. You know, yeah. we're kind of we're on the way. We're not there yet, but you know that's why I always was. I mean, growing up, you know, DT like she's really the only one who played beyond the three point line, like yeah. as much as a lot of the NBA guys do. So like now we have you know more players even at the college level now, playing behind the three-point line. So I've always been a fan of Trey's game. I think it's funny how much people hate him. Like, he's this little light-skinned, adorable <laughs> thing, and he just rips your hide out on the court. But I remember what, whatever year that was when they played the Knicks, mm -hmm. like when they had all those videos of the fans yeah. outside, like, talk you about have, You still have Knicks fans to this day. Oh, my gosh, that was the... That Trey's not even playing the Knicks right now, right. and the fuck Trey Young chance will, will ring out all, all through that Madison was, Square those Garden. Those videos are the funniest videos. But that's how that's how you know you was that dude. Yes, that's he, how you know you was that dude. It. When when uh, a whole city can think about you years later, they're in the playoffs playing another team and they think about, about you. Trey. Yeah. This right here, this right here probably freaked them out. Oh, <laughs> so here you go. Like, oh. <laughs> they they need to be worried about Trigger Trav, alert. and they still Trigger. worried about Trey. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of Trey Young slander. Uh, I'm friends with the family, but I will say the the, the photo of the lollipop with the little hair dangling oh off of God. it. <laughs> this shit's funny. That, that but that's shit. how you. But that, that's that lets you know the level of like the greatness of someone. Just a just a culture feel, uh, like fear in you. Yeah. Right. That that's like as a hooper. That's. That lets me know, like, you going out your way to show me that's how much you hate me lets me know that I, I was impact. Yeah. What he said, he was like, they don't do that, they don't do that to everybody. Mm -mm. Like, that's, that's, his, that's no. his mentality. Yeah. They're not like, oh, they're bothering me. Yeah. Like, well, they're not bothering anybody else. What does that say about me? Yeah. Mm. That's why I, I like Trey Young. I think because Trey's undersized, he talks that big shit, he backs it up. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. even worse. If he was like 6'5, six, 6'6, six, six doing I think there would be like. It's just the shit, like, because. <laughs> It's the like it's antics, right? Like just little antics. Like that's where hibachi. When I used to do this shit, <laughs> when I used to do this shit, or I can't feel my face, right? People actually like people hate that. I remember uh, Tyson. No, no, not Tyson. Uh, Tayshawn Prince. Tayshawn Prince. I hit the shot. Like he switched on me and hit the shot, and I said hibachi. The fuck you talking about? <laughs> yeah, oh y'all. He was oh, He was mad. He was mad. Just one shot. It was just one shot. 
Just one. All I needed was one shot to go in. I don't give a fuck if I'm 0 for 9. <laughs> one <laughs> shot if I'm on yeah, fire. Go. Like, it's a way of getting yourself going. So, like, the antics is, it's like, it's, 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 it's needed. Yeah. It makes the game enjoyable. 100%. Because the early part of the Hawks Celtics series, nobody really gave a shit. Now I have reason to watch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know? I, I was feeling that way too. But do, we, do, we we go, do we go further than where we at? I think, and the fucked up part is they're going back to Atlanta. And, I think Atlanta's going to win this next game. You think, think they're going to win game six? So DeJounte was at home, like, Yeah, he ready. was hype. He was uh, hype. He mm-hmm. was on Instagram hype. <sighs> I That's think the, 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 the comedic part is, though, that Atlanta thought they were going to get packed up. They had Janet Jackson, concert <laughs> at State Farm Arena, yep. scheduled for Thursday yeah. night. They right. had to move her to Friday, but that also has Taylor Swift at the Mercedes-Benz Arena. For those that know Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta said, we do not believe in y'all. <laughs> but we <laughs> believe in Janet, Janet and Taylor. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. <laughs> but now they got to go head-to-head with Taylor. But it's also hurts for me that Janet's in State Farm and Taylor's in the Mercedes-Benz, but that's just... I'm an old head. Man, I understand man. it. Taylor got a big. He's got a bigger fan base, huh? Yeah. Man, that's just crazy that they just already had booked that shit. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, but good game, y'all. Good season. Uh, good try. <laughs> y'all got some tickets? We got some tickets. <laughs> this is very Atlanta S, though. They put a Chick fil A in a football stadium where games are played on Sunday. So oh, it's not, you know, Atlanta is notorious for wow, this shit. Wow, that's horrible. That but let, let's talk about Trey. After the game, Trey Young's dad. <laughs> <laughs> That, that is hilarious. Think about it. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. After the game, Trey Young's dad, uh, Ray, tweeted the following about Trey's experience with current Hawks head coach Quinn Snyder. Said it once, and I'll say it again, no disrespect to any before, but Quinn Snyder is the best thing to happen to my son since he arrived in Atlanta draft night. Dang. I love Ray. He, he's my guy. I love when people say no disrespect because you already know. You about to say something disrespectful. <laughs> Shots are being fired. Man. But, you know, there's been talk about Trey and the Hawks potentially ending their, their relationship. Should the Hawks keep Trey? Should Trey want to stay in Atlanta? Should they keep him? Yes. Who, who else are they going to get? It's Atlanta. Mm-hmm. It was, what's crazy is, as great as Atlanta is as a city, no one wants to play there. Ja would play there. Ja? Ja would play in Atlanta. I mean, a, a, a young kid would play anywhere. But I'm talking about the build a team. You're not getting many free agents. No. Nah. Like you got to oversell over yourself. James Harden will go there. James? James will go there. <laughs> Let me throw him out there. Let me throw him out there. He's like, in y'all, Atlanta, y'all, Vegas. Y'all catch him when I'm throwing What I'm saying is, yeah, the, the strip club cool, but at the end <laughs> right. of the day. As he was waiting for. Yeah, I mean, the strip club is cool, but at the end of the day, like, why would you want to be an NBA player playing in a crowd that there's only like 70 people in there half the time? There you go. There you go. I knew you was getting somewhere. There's 60 niggas in there. Going in, man, so y'all like, you know, have you been to a Hawks game? You know how hard it is to get there? Like, parking, it's annoying. Yes. Like, I feel like this, the traffic, yeah, it's a mess. It's all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. It's tight. It's different. They got, like, one way in. Like, but when you yeah, get in like, there. even because even when, when I came here to L.A., I was like, the traffic is crazy, but, like, those games we pack early. Like, people find their way around the city. Mm-hmm. They get there early. In Atlanta, like, downtown Atlanta is, like, just... A shit show, essentially. N- niggas, niggas yeah. being right. late, late that to everything. <laughs> and when you show, and when you finally get into the game, it's a club in there. It's like they let y'all Second in. Quarter. <laughs> let y'all in the nah, club. Every time I'm in, I'm like, man, ain't nobody. <laughs> when the last time you been in there? Huh? When the last time you been in there? When they had good cheerleaders? Oh I'm lord. Like, they used to have. I was the in there when they shut down the NBA. I was. It was Vince Carter's last game. Oh wow. Yeah, they stopped the game. They're like, everybody has to leave. In the middle of the game? Yeah, that was when when COVID like started. But did the we game just, started? The game was going on. They ended the game. Oh no, you would have messed up my stats. <laughs> <laughs> this shit don't <laughs> count, right? <laughs> the game was Take over. And they're no, like, sorry everyone, the game is over. Gotta go. All right, y'all. Well, let's keep this thing moving and jump in. Time for our last segment of the show. One of my favorites. Mostly fans. We fans, we asked y'all for some questions. And y'all delivered actually some, some reasonably good shit. Normally y'all let me down. I don't have high hopes for y'all. <laughs> but y'all let me down normally. It'd be good, it'd be good comedy in there though. But so we're going with uh, first question is from Showtime SFG. This question is for Lexi. Oh, Do you think not allowing women players to be one and done hurts the WNBA from a viewership standpoint? No. Not at all? No. Because no. all the players everyone is talking about right now are in like year three. Mm. 
Skip? I do. I mean, I would love to. I would love to hear why, because I just feel like the the viewership. It's not like a. It's not. A, it's like a college to pro issue. Like it's just like viewership in general. Like one and done. These girls are playing against girls. Like they're playing against girl. Like Molly, who wants to be a scientist. Like they're not. There's not many times they're going against other pros. Yeah. So you gonna throw them into a training camp, and then what? Now you're 18 years old. You've been cut. Now you gotta go overseas. At 18, a young woman, you don't have a college degree. You're not gonna play till you're 40. Like, so what are you gonna do? Like, I know we're talking about viewership. But like, and I just, I love our fans, and I love like what, what the direction everything's going. But like, it's doing a disservice to the players if you if that narrative continues. See, I've I did the research, right? So it's no different than when the NBA opened it up to younger players. Right. So what ends up happening is there's there's Okay, let's take, let's take you at right out of high school, or one year, mm -hmm. right? And I put you in, you finish your college career, or I put you in the WNBA, right. right? By the time you turn 22, which player would be better? The one who went to college or the one who got to play against professionals for three years? Which one would be better? Mm -hmm. If those two had to play against each other. Mm, the college pro My or the pro pro? My college version. On, I mean, and it sucks because not everybody has the same, like, trajectory in the league. Like, me in year three, like, her confidence versus senior year Lex. Like, senior year Lex would probably bust third-year pro Lex just you, from, like, it, confidence you, standpoint. You would, you would think so, but just like any hooper, it takes, it takes about three years to adjust to any new level. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? So if you take the person and put them in the, the NBA or put them in, you know, the college by the time they're in their third year they're maxing out right no matter what so what happened is the girls basketball is they're losing they're losing the wild the wild side of themselves the creativity mm -hmm. so if you take a kid and say all right one and done and then put them in the WNBA their wildness is still there right in college you get broken yep. yeah playing four years so now you become a system player. Like yeah, they're still running UCLA cuts. Yep. Who the fuck does UCLA cuts? Right? That's like that's like it's a good cut. Get no, that's like it. East. It's that, an elite UCLA. cut. <laughs> yeah, okay. That, but that's like that's like, <laughs> East, that's like East Coast. No time on the clock. There's no no shot clock. You just run the yeah. shit out of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That's that offense still. But who's but, running Arizona cuts, Gil? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, fucking Arizona cuts. So what? Shit, so what shit. ends up? So what ends up happening is what. Because everyone comes in at 22, what you're losing is you're losing your audience. The audience that's being lost is the kids, mm -hmm. right? So freshmen, sophomores, the, the, the girls who buy uniforms and jerseys and right. socks, those, those fans are lost because they become your rival at mm -hmm. some point. So if you're a freshman or sophomore in college, by the time you're a senior, all your fan base is in college now. Right. They're rivals. They're not right. fans. So when you get drafted and you're the number one pick in the draft. Right. They're not. No. Your I fan base. That. Your fan base don't even know. Who, that fan base doesn't even know who the fuck you are. They're like, yeah. who is this? I don't know. Where is, where is the guy? Like, they don't. I agree with you because it's funny because, like, now I'm in year six now. Like, you're asking these college girls who your favorite player are. They're still saying Maya and DT because they're just older. Like, mm -hmm. There are a lot of there are some college players that I you know I've played against. I've met when we were younger, like we were rivals. So like, yeah, I do agree with that. But it's like it's from a system standpoint, like something will have to change on the W side as far as how they decide to keep players yeah, or be, to benefit yeah. girls leaving early because there's like a lot of vets That's, that should not okay. be. Okay. Yeah, so right. what what ends up happening is the vets is the ones that get cut, right? Fuck out of here. It, it's it's because youth youth runs money. Yep. Like youth, like I'd rather like let's say Lululemon, you know, any makeup, any you know, bra, all that. I will if I'm a company, I'd rather give it to someone that's 19, 20 coming into the right, WNBA exactly. versus someone like even the way little things, even the way a a, a drafty gets dressed, right? Imagine 22 year old woman. Coming into every day versus a 19 year old girl yeah. getting drafted. What does those two outfits look like? Right. Now think about the high school girls. Who are they looking yeah. at? Right. 
Because I there was some, <laughs> I showed the outfits to a group of girls. It's like, oh, what kind of grandmas these these? And I'm just sitting there like. The I was actually very, su- I mean, they didn't look bad, but like I was actually very surprised at how they dressed at the draft. Like it was very modest. I mean, they looked beautiful. But I was like, I was expecting them to be like popping out. Like, yeah, yes. and they did it. And I was like, you guys look, I mean, they look great. But it was like, they all had like on pantsuits and blazers. And I was like, because I remember my draft class, like we, I don't know, little dress. Like I, one of my friends had like on like a tight form dress. Like she looked amazing. So like when they came out like that, I was a little surprised. But they looked great. But again, like that's where expansion comes into play. Where you can have those young players come in and maybe not be as elite as you want them to be, but like they're essentially like not taking a spot that you need because there's only 12, 11 I mean, most. You, yeah, you only got 11. I mean, they're I mean gonna it's have... 12 max, but the way the salaries have been set up the last few years, some teams are carrying 10. But, the, but that's, what's, that's where the money has been being lost. It's the, it's the youth. Like the, because the fact that you can stay in school now and make more money than WNBA players, the WNBA girls, these girls don't even want to come out. Yeah. I mean, can I give a take, though? I'm going to go against you on... But, like, first of all... The viewership. Coming out huh? is not a... Like, coming out, like, that's not a... That's, like, not a thing. Like, if they wanted to come out now, they like, they literally couldn't. Who? The younger players. Yeah, you, gotta, <laughs> you have to be 22. You got to be 22. Yeah, but, like... 22. But you usually have to, like... That's still, like, your senior year. So, say, like, they the the decided draft. they... You have to be 22 the year of the draft. So say, like... It doesn't matter if the girls were saying, oh, I can't wait to get the W. They, they couldn't anyway. So it's like, why do we even... Yeah, 22, ask? that's... So if you were 22 coming into the NBA, you're trash. Yeah. I mean... You're trash as fuck. But again, like, it, it, <laughs> I know, like, money, money is the root of it all. But, like, I'm just thinking long term as a woman, as a black woman in this world, you need to stay in school, like... But even beyond... I don't know. Like, beyond I mean, I've point. always been big on that even before NIO, like... Get your degree, get your master's, do all that, network, all that stuff, because you're not getting life-changing money yet. Yet. Hopefully. Well, I, well now we're in the happens. NIL world, so right. know, somebody so like an Angel Reese or a Kayla Clark. Stay. Why yeah. would you not stay? How much yeah. money I would make in college? Like, Let's talk about what you said, though, um, the one and done, right? You mm-hmm. feel like it creates more for your fan base for the one and done, mm-hmm. right? So the research that I did for our side, the men's side, mm-hmm. right? is you look at Kobe, Amari, KG, certain high school guys that came out, right? Mm-hmm. It took them one, two, maybe three years to build the fan base because back then there wasn't no social media, right? So they didn't take with them the, the high school phenomenon fan base that they were building up and convert it over to an NBA fan base that can come see them play. Yes, they did. No, they didn't. Let me explain. Kobe was a... Let me explain. Mm-hmm. So when Kobe says, it took me three years to learn the NBA game and go through my trials and tribulations, this is the same amount of time in, in the college game that you build your fan base up. When we were coming out, it took us two, three years to come out because we were building rapport. We were building a fan base. And so when we do come out, we have following from our universities. Yeah. The university following is what helped us stay three years. Now, if I was to come out my freshman year Go straight to the league. I don't have no fan base. You have your high school fan base. I'm, I'm, and I, I don't have that because I went to boarding school. So I don't have no fan base at all. I wouldn't be mad if they allowed, like, if they, like, allowed, like, the juniors, to, like, if you turn 21. Yeah. Like, I feel like that. Like I said, the players <laughs> that everybody is talking about are juniors in college. Like, but no one. They, Paige is probably the only freshman that, I mean, it, even Stewie. Stewie won four championships, four national player of the years. And I did not hear not one person ever say, why don't we do one and done? Right. But she's at UConn, too, so they already got the Yeah, but I'm like, win. what's the difference? She obviously, And then she's doing the same thing the W. She was, was dominant her entire time at UConn, and this conversation was never a thing. Now, now imagine if she was been dominant this whole time, if she came into the WNBA after her first year, she would still be dominant. There's nothing that changes. She, and I don't, you just miss up the would have been. I think she still would have been dominant. Nah, it's the, it's the fan base like Kobe, that you missed. Kobe was fan favorite all-star as a second year player. He had, second year. But, second year. But, Tracy but McGrath. The think, but, but think of what I'm saying is think about LaMelo La, La Ball, LeBron James. When they come in, in they're bringing the youth. But it started the youth, with LeBron, though. It the started youth, with LeBron. No, the youth buys this. But you when you're buying a jersey for you're buying a jersey for your your child. No, you're so you proving my point. One year, 
the the college girls are going to build their the same fan base in college, as a no, pro they're, they're, as they would the three four no, years in you're, school. You're, it's your high school group. Like let's say Juju, Juju, right? Juju Watkins, number one player since eighth grade. If she went into the draft right now, she'll have the number one selling jersey because every girl from 11th, 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th is going to buy everything she wears. But there's not 20 juniors. By the time she, but by the time she becomes a senior, this whole group, this whole group is gone. But there's not 20 Jujus, just like there's it don't not matter. 20 LeBron. But it doesn't. It's an exception. She's an this exception. Like only deceptions come, like when, only deceptions when come when in like and drop the, in. The 18-year-old makes her only fans and everyone like yeah. subscribes and she makes two million dollars the first week and then I know nothing about it. Then it disappears. <laughs> I don't know nothing about it. I'm about to take your word. Tell, no, just, because no, it happened tell, to like the it happened to the Meet Me Outside girl. Yeah. Bad baby. She turned 18, yeah. turned went only fans and made millions of dollars. Yeah. But like now, what? Like I don't know. Obviously, I don't follow only fans. I don't know. We've seen like, it all. Yeah. Talent is like, talent is talent. The, the crop is going to always rise. There's, there's going to be kids that come in and they're going to fall off. You know, that's that's what it is. I mean, but until the WNBA gives players the opportunity to do that without cutting them, then yeah. mm-hmm. but it's not going to be able to happen. Uh, me, I mean, I don't think any WNBA team will be dumb enough to draft someone in the first round and cut them. It's happened. They do it all That's the 22. Time. Not 18. I'm not cutting an 18-year-old. Why not? Bread. Because they're, they're, I'm saying, they're to because I'm, I'm drafting them off of uh, potential. But the break because is always an issue with the salary cap, right? So you got to make those moves. But the WNBA don't draft off potential. Because they, 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 they can't. They can't afford to because it's 22. No, because it's not bread. enough potential players. What I'm saying is 22. Now, let's say, let's okay, if Juju, if Juju was in a draft right now, she's the number one pick. Mm-hmm. Number one. There's no, there's no question. So, okay. She's she's 17. Okay. Turning 18. There's no way she's getting cut. I don't give a fuck yeah, what she looks like this you're, year. You're holding the standard to the one player who's better than all the other players. The top, but even the top, the holding top to three. Someone else other than her. The top she's three getting cut. The top three, right? The top three girls. If they're 18 and I'm comparing them to 22, my comparison is this. At 20, if they're in this league for four years, at 22, would they be better than these girls coming in? Yes. I agree with you. We just don't have the space you to know. do that. No, I don't know. A lot of yeah. girls are going to get cut. Yeah, yeah. they're going to get slapped. <laughs> so, no, 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 no. no, no, no. There's going to be a lot of so like, stuff. Right there's there's a lot of guillotine like, going for on. For me, people are like, like do you, would you rather have more teams or more roster spots? For me, more teams, right? I don't know. I feel like with how you, if you want that change to happen, I mean, I feel like the roster spot would be easier to, 15, 15. to make internal like, changes instead of adding to yeah, completely yeah, 15, new. Yeah, if you, if you put everybody at 36 15. draft picks last year, once like 16 of them were waived. Fuck. Yeah, bro. It's a cold game. Yeah, bro. I just, 15, 15, 15 not like I'd rather, have, I'd rather have every team carry 15 then yep. and get 22. Well, that's the, and that's the whole point. And that's, you know, the league's headed in the right direction. you can have those young players come in with their popularity, whatever, yes. and not and still hold them to an expectation, but one that makes more sense. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, I mean, the NBA, that's what I said, the NBA did it so you do have a metrics of what it and looks like. And your first round pick contract is not guaranteed, so. There's nothing guaranteed, Ooh. that's fine. Yeah. You don't get a guaranteed contract, well now, we just changed the CBA, if they pick up your option after your rookie season, then that's the first time you could get a guaranteed contract. Shit is wild. Well, there, there's no guarantees <laughs> in life, but there is a guarantee that Gil Zarina will be back tomorrow, Thursday. Lexi Brown, we appreciate you pulling up. Of course. So look forward to you doing your thing with the Sparks. Yeah. I will be in attendance. Even though I'm going to be honest, Staples Center, y'all done, y'all done started bullshitting. The hot dogs are smaller. The soda drinks are smaller. <laughs> Jeannie, y'all done fucking... They like the Clippers. Hey, where's the big cup, Jeannie? <laughs> I need the big soda. What's going down? But that's for another show. We appreciate y'all plugging in with it. Gil Zarina will be back tomorrow. See y'all then. Let's go.